Hi guys, it's Steffi from The Novelty Corner. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another Books Beside My Bed video. For those of you who are new here, I film one of these videos every week where I wrap up the last seven days of reading. For those of you who are very familiar with the series, welcome back. This is my reading week from the 16th to the 22nd of June and I can't believe we're almost all the way through June already. That's really, really scary. This week I read nine books. Four of those were picture books. One was middle grade. There was two YA books, an anthology and one adult book. I also DNF'd a book because reasons. I read a total of 2,301 pages and my yearly reading total is up to 164 books. For those of you who are interested, I have just recently started re-watching Veronica Mars, which I loved way back when, and I am re-watching the first three seasons and the movie in preparation for the fourth season that's coming out in July and I'm ridiculously excited about it. So next week's reading could be a little bit interesting because I think I'll probably just prioritize re-watching over reading, except for things that have to get read next week, and that's okay with me. I am currently rereading Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett, and yes, this is a very old mass market paperback copy that I have. You might remember a couple of weeks ago I watched the Good Omens series on Amazon Prime. I really enjoyed it, but I wanted to go back and reread it, so I'm only not very far in. Hang on. I'm 51 pages in. I'm enjoying it. It's making me laugh out loud. What can I say? It's just going to be a great read. And as for the book that I DNF'd, I'm really annoyed by this because I literally filmed my book haul and then started reading this book. And in my book haul I said, I'm really excited about reading this. And then I read it and I was dead bored. And that is Dry by Neil and Jared Schusterman. So I got 141 pages in and I every one of those pages I just wanted to put the book down. But I got 141 pages and then I called it quits because I thought I'm going to give it a decent chance. And it's, you know, it's not a small book. So 141 pages is a pretty good effort. And the fact is it was just boring and I couldn't stand any of the characters. I just was not interested. So, sorry. Now on to some books. There are some review copies in here. So I'll show you them, but I won't talk about them because I need to wait until the release dates before I'm allowed to talk about them. From Alan and Unwin, I had two picture books for review. These are coming out on July 1st, so there'll be reviews for them very soon. The first one is Goodbye House, Hello House by Margaret Wilde and illustrated by Anne James. This is a 2019 release from Alan and Unwin and I gave it four out of five stars. And the second one is One Runaway Rabbit by David Metzenthin and illustrated by Matred Murphy, a 2019 release from Alan Unwin. I also gave this a four out of five stars. They're both very cute books by great Australian authors. So definitely check them out, but I will have reviews for them next week. The other two picture books that I read this week were written and illustrated by the same author and that is Connie Fetchner, I think. And my parents actually bought these books for me when they went to a market. The story behind it is Connie actually passed away, I think in 2017. Maybe I'm not hundred percent sure of the dates. I just sort of know the story from what my parents were saying because they bought these books off Connie's father. He still goes around to markets or her family still goes around to markets with her books and sells them because they're absolutely beautiful and gorgeously illustrated. So the first one is Jimmy Roo and this is about a little kangaroo who is very afraid of shadows and he tries to go to all his family members to help him become less afraid of shadows and it's a very gorgeous little story. And then Alphabetalicious, an ABC feast of Australian wildlife and other things is also gorgeous. It's one of those alphabet books where you have to spot all of the different things in the picture and it's absolutely gorgeous and I'm actually going to use this for my grade three fours because they quite like spotting things in pictures and when we do our sound and spelling focus of the week this may come in handy so I'm looking forward to it because it's quite detailed and very very beautiful. The next book I read is also another review copy so I won't be talking about it in depth here because I am part of a blog tour for this book and that is While You Were Reading by Ellie Berg and Michelle Kalis. These two co-wrote The Book Ninja and this is a Another book set in the same sort of world, which is a contemporary world, it's our world, it's set in Melbourne. You do get hints of characters and places from the book Ninja because it is set in this sort of place. But it is about Beatrix who is 29 and after accidentally ruining her best friend's wedding, she moves to Melbourne and tries to make a new start and things don't go quite to plan. So I will talk more about this in a future review, so stay tuned. Then I read The Honeyman and the Hunter by Neil Grant. This was sent to me unsolicited from Alan and Unwin a couple of months ago, or at the, a couple of months ago, at the start of the year, let's be real. And it's a 2019 release from Alan and Unwin and I gave this one three out of five stars. It is about Rudra, who is a 16 year old boy living in Australia with his family. His mother is Indian and his father is Australian. And then his grandmother arrives from India. And he's never met her and he really doesn't have much interaction with his mother's culture or his mother's 
family because of his father. Suddenly they he uncovers sort of this secret that has been underpinning his entire life. His father is a fisherman and trying to force Rudra into that life as well and there's a whole lot of things going on and then eventually Rudra and his mother end up heading for India and trying to uncover some family secrets and put some things to rest. There's a real sort of magical realism element woven into it and it's a story of growing up and learning who you are and finding yourself. I think the only thing that bothered me with this was that it was not own voices, but I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It seemed to be quite respectfully done and it was well written. I just don't think I connected as much to the main character and I do struggle with male main characters, particularly teenage male main characters. And I think that's just because I'm both female and adult and I just don't relate to that at all. But it was interesting and I'm glad that I read it. It's totally not something I would have picked up for myself, so it's out of my comfort zone and that's always a good thing to try something new. Then I picked up something I knew I would really enjoy and that is Serious Moonlight by Jen Bennett and this is a YA contemporary book. It is a 2019 release from Simon & Schuster and I gave it four out of five stars. It's not my favorite of Jen Bennett's books. I think I'm my favorite so far is Starry Eyes. This is about 18 year old Birdie who's been raised by her grandparents and over the summer, she starts a new job working at a hotel only to discover that a boy that she had a hookup with completely randomly also works at the hotel and he's delighted to see her and yet she is very, very uncomfortable by this. And on top of that, she has always been a great lover of mysteries and so she ends up finding a mystery to start solving at the hotel where she's working. And that's what draws her back to Daniel as the two of them begin to investigate this mystery. And it was fun and charming and romantic and at the same time, very honest and open. Jen Bennett's books are really sex positive and they don't, she doesn't sugarcoat it. All of her characters for the most part have really clear lines of communication. They confront things head on and they grow quite significantly as a result. And to be honest, her books feel like the most real world examples of relationships that I've read in YA Contemporaries. And I mean, I will without fail, pick up one of her books and read it. I have no hesitation whatsoever about her content because She's just fantastic, so I do highly recommend this. I also read Sick Bay by Nova Wheatman. This is a Love Oz Kids middle grade book, and it is a 2019 release from the University of Queensland Press. It is the story of two girls who meet in Sick Bay at their school. So they're in primary school, they're in grade six. Meg uses Sick Bay to hide from the other kids at school. She's got a whole lot of things going on at home, and it makes life really, really difficult for her. And so she hides in Sick Bay to avoid all the other students in her year level. And Riley is a type one diabetic who is who has only just recently moved to the school. And people don't really understand what managing diabetes means to her. And she's also got quite an overbearing mother who has is not letting Riley manage her diabetes. And so Riley's rebelling a little bit against some of the constraints that her mother has placed on her. So it's really about that dynamic of finding your place, finding friends, being opening and accepting of other people, being understanding. It's really how these two girls go from quite an antagonistic relationship to a friendship, to understanding one another's perspectives and the life that they lead. And also you've got elements of navigating unhealthy friendships within the school, of graduating from primary school, which is a topic that I have a very strong thoughts on, but completely for a different video. The characters were really well done in this. I really liked both girls. I liked how true their stories feel. So I really like this. I highly recommend you pick it up if you find a copy of it. It's a really great read. And then finally I read Growing Up Muslim in Australia edited by Amra Padjilik and Demet Devaroran and I apologize if I butchered the author's names. I think this was originally published in 2014 but this is a 2019 edition from Alan Unwin and I gave it five out of five stars. It is a collection of 12 stories from 12 Muslims who have grown up in Australia and all of their stories vary. They come from all different parts of the world, from different parts of the Muslim faith, and it is their stories growing up. So they're all nonfiction stories. They're very easy to read, very easy to understand and unpack. And it's quite a powerful read and definitely worth checking out. There are many times I just sit there, I was just sitting there reading going, I can't even comprehend that. So it does put into perspective a whole lot of things. Well worth a read. I'm really enjoying this series. This is the second book in the Growing Up in Australia series that I've read and I definitely want to check out others in the future. So those are all the books that I have read in the last seven days. In the comments below let me know if you have read any of these books or if you are planning on picking any of them up in the future. Otherwise let me know what you have been reading over the last week. I hope that wherever you are in the world you're having a wonderful day and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.